بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أحبت في الله السلام عليكم رحمة الله وبركاته حياكم الله جميعا May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with ikhlas wa thabar ala nabi ala sunnat al-nabi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam Ahabati fillah I wanted to talk about something we've talked about many many times but it's something which plagues many of us and we all struggle with in some form or another and that is hijrah the hijrah I'm talking about, Habita Fillah, Kama Kala Nabiuna Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is a hijrah, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that making hijrah from one's sins, that this is a, a great form of hijrah. And Why this is important for us all? Because our sins can be paralyzing. They, they paralyze you, in fact. They are a means of chaining you. When a person is paralyzed from an illness or in a coma, that means they, their brain still has function, but their body their, their brain probably has limited functions and their body is still uh, their, and their body is, is, is dead if they are not totally comatose or what have you. And so sin, when you are chained and restrained by your sins, This paralyzes you from so many good deeds because it becomes a cycle of sin. Ma'asi and the noob. You know, this sinfulness and wickedness, those things can, can paralyze you from doing good deeds because they cause you to lose hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they cause you to lose hope in yourself. Meaning that you don't, you no longer think you are worthy of even being a believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or you're no, no longer worthy of even having the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all kind of erroneous beliefs that paralyze you and cause you to be to to be further away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is incredibly dangerous the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam he said kullu ibn adam khata wa khayr al khata'in atawabun all the children of adam uh, <clears throat> commit sin and the best of those who sin are those who repent so we know and we understand that we all sin we all make mistakes we all need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and need to return to Allah Azza wa Jal. And we need to understand that the best from amongst us, so if that's everyone, the best from amongst us are those who repent and come back to Allah. <clears throat> and also, as the scholars mention with regards to this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam, they mention when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam said, <laughs> that the best of those who who sin are the Tawabun. The Tawabun Habatifillah, they mention that linguistically this is someone who does kathra. 
Catherine to to uh, Tova. They're constantly making repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's the Sifa that we want. This is the characteristic or the trait that we want to gain is be of those who constantly make repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Constantly reviewing ourselves. Constantly striving to draw nearer to your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Constantly recognizing our shortcomings. That all of us have akhta. All of us have sins. All of us have rebellious traits. But not to give up hope. Because what is going to distinguish you, what is going to save you, is coming back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never close that door of repentance for yourself. Now, when I was talking about that this is restraining and chaining when you have these sins, especially I'm talking about the major sins. The major sins, they are so... They, they block you, they inhibit you from reaching your potential. They can cause you to be depressed, so they have a, an, an, a, 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 an, a, a way of causing you anxiety they, and depression, so stress and depression, because no doubt when a person is on high Iman, and think about the li times in your life that your Iman was really high, and you were just feeling so good, and you were so involved in the Quran, and so involved with engaged with the son of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam think about how in essence that high that you felt that high period in your life the way your outlook on life the way you were able to deal with any challenge okay but when you have those sins and you're restrained and constrained by the sins by your own shortcomings and faults think about how that How that pollutes you and it makes you unable to deal with the various struggles and strife that you you find in life because those sins they block you from so much khair so if we contemplate The importance of making tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we see that it, it, it's on a number of levels that our lack of tawbah, you know, our sinfulness, it's on a number of levels is how it, it affects us. It affects us in so many ways. And that's why making that hijrah from your sins is so important and it's so important to not give up on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never give up on the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. understand and know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he sees you he understands who you are he understands your sins he subhanahu wa ta'ala can help you. He tabarak wa ta'ala can assist us in our affairs. So do not give up on the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I say this as a reminder to myself and my brothers and sisters. And that as we sin, our hearts become hard. And they become harder and harder as we in, 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 in indulge and increase in the sins. And it can lead to disbelief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he mentioned a very important statement that I like to reflect on often. He said, Al-Ma'asi barid al-Kufr. He said that Sinfulness is a means to disbelief. Sinfulness is a means to disbelief. How is that so? Well, think about it 
when you engage in a particular sin. Some people have problems, they're, they're stuck with certain sins. They're addicted to drugs and alcohol. They're addicted, in a sense, to zina and, and, and fisk or pornography. And some of these addictions are truly addictions. They are really, they become, they are a, I guess you might say, a psychophysio need. <clears throat> Something that that affects your your psychology, your mental, <clears throat> your mental, your mental uh, ability. It impairs you mentally, or you have a mental uh, 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 need and desire and craving, as well as a uh, physical. So it affects both. In that they find comfort when they find stress. Think about it. <clears throat> How many people that when they have stress, especially from non-Muslims, but Muslims as well, but they look for that outlet, for example, the drugs. That's when they, they really want to smoke some weed. They say, man, I got to I gotta hit it. I got to have, I gotta hit, have a blunt. Or I need a drink. Okay? This is how alcoholics and, and drug addicts, and for those who are more experienced in these uh, matters or, or professionals, they can give you more insight into that. But... They have that craving. They need that outlet. That outlet, it comes from hitting the bottle. It comes from hitting the hitting the blunt. That's their outlet. That's how they, they release. That's how they escape for a minute. All of us want an escape. Some of us just do it in a healthy way. For me, I like to come out here. That's one of my escapes. You know, just to see Allah, Isaiah Jalas, beautiful creation. And just clear my head. I, 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 I'm, I'm kind of addicted to this. I can't really live without being outside at some point. I love it. I need it. You know? But alhamdulillah, it's a good addiction. I think it's, a, it's positive. Because you reflect on the ayats of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and so forth. And, you li and I like to share that experience. And that's why I do videos. But for some people... <clears throat> That, for example, pornography, and pornography is such a uh, a dangerous illness, if you will, for a lack of better terms and words, because it also has a very addictive effect. There are some people who are so into it, they have to see it, uh, you know, they feel they have to see it, and I don't know what all the physio things that are going on, you know, there are people, they go to uh, meetings, they go, they join organizations to deal with it because it becomes so bad. There are people, I've heard of stories and read about people who lock themselves for 24, 48 hours. You know, that's all they're doing. You know, they just can't get enough. So you know the person like that, they have the sick, sick heart. From an Islamic point of view, they are very sick. They are spiritually sick. They're struggling because that stuff is rotting their heart. They can't even have a tesouter of anyone or the opposite sex especially, but perhaps depending on what they're looking at, it may be just other human beings, some of them to the extent of animals. They've gone way beyond the hud of their fitra and humanity. But they're sick, ultimately, it's a sickness for whatever caused it. And whenever that door opened and it just, it's a floodgate. And for some people, they are so immersed, it is just, it is affecting them physically, mentally, spiritually, it's killing them. So this is why we have to take the means, we have to come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to open that door up by seeking the help that we need, because it depends on your sins, depends on what you struggle with. And that's why I'm talking about the major sins, the minor sins, they're, they're sins. And we have to make istighfar. But unlike the major sins, they are, the danger of them is not as, you know, they're not as, as dangerous. But it can cause you to do a lot of them, and that's dangerous, or to be on it regularly. And that's dangerous. So all sin needs to be repented from. 
But the major sin requires toba. It re requires leaving the sin. It requires um, uh, putting a barrier between you and the sin and being determined not to return to the sin and feeling sorrow for doing that sin. That's toba in Eliza with Joe. We all need that toba. We all need to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So never think yourself arrogant and think that you are uh, above sinning or you're above uh, making toba and istighfar to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need the reminder. Some of us were so much in sin or because we have so much, so little knowledge of Islam that we do so many sinful things we don't even think it's sin. How many sisters don't know anything about hijab? They just think hijab is a little scarf on their hair. Some of them don't even think hijab is even that important aslan. So they wear perfume and makeup. And then they think they're of the salihat. They're, they're righteous women. How many brothers, they have so much munkarat. They, have, they shave their beards, you know, for no excuse. Just because they think it's handsome. Because their girlfriend likes it. Or their wife, who could even be a Muslim, and likes that. But they take it lightly. So much disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they can't even tell munkar from ta'at. They can't tell obedience from sinfulness. So this is, in general, going back to the hadith we began with, about the importance of making hijrah from our sins, I ask that my Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala enlightens me first and foremost, and then makes this a source of enlightenment for others, that we can leave off the sins, that we can come back to Allah And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be on sincerity to Him, ikhlas, with the bat Allah sunnah, ameen ya rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.